Sanji with Janine Preston of Life is a Beach and Life is a Beach in the Midlands. And as you know, we've been traveling through the Midlands and our overnight stay was with Kate Kelly of, of um, Beverly Country Cottages. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, Kate? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm so pleased about that. You have the most beautiful area here. I mean, the cottages were just, they were nestling in the middle of the Camberg Mountains, which I think is on the end of the Drakensberg. Are you? Yeah, so we're in the Dargle Valley. So Camberg is sort of our neighbour, but um, we're sort of at the base of, well, not quite the base, but the base of the, the rolling hills towards the Drakensberg. So um, lots of arable farmland out here, and it's just, it's, Stunning. Yeah. And you're on, I see you're on what they call the R103, which comes off or the R134. Yes. I know it's one of those routes. Yes. So we're sort of um, just off the beaten track of the R103, which is the real Midlands meandering route. And um, so we're sort of a little bit off that, but close enough for everyone to have something to do and go and see and where the restaurants are. Are there a lot of hiking trails around here? There are. There's... Um, because of our arable land here, there's just this um, Intlazan, which is just behind us. That's a mountain which you can climb, and it just has the most stunning views of the Drakensberg and all our area around us. And we've got blessed with um, indigenous forests, which people love to go and uh, walk in because it just has that feeling of that it. eerie feeling yes. of harry potter yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's lovely yes. so what is your journey to where you are today i mean you obviously haven't always lived here um because when we chatted last night you said that you had moved up from hilton and come back from limpopo and you know yes. just so we moved here in 2009 uh, my girls were our girls were two and a half years old um we came from limpopo we were looking for to come back to natal um, and we found Beverly, and although I wasn't that keen on running a lodge, um, yeah, we've made it work, and we've made it our home, and it's it's just beautiful here. I actually couldn't think of anywhere else I'd like to go. And I must say, it's a beautiful area for the children to grow up in. It is. It is. We've got the farm animals. We've got the cows. They they ride, um, and I think that's we get a lot of families here. So, and they, we do the pony rides and just the space. I mean, it's just space. There's no water here, unfortunately, but the plus side is that um, kids can actually just run free without having their parents watching them. And they love it, uh, whether they play soccer on the front lawn here or croquet or ping pong, tennis. Yeah, it's lovely for them. And in terms of distance uh, from activities, what sort of activities do you I see? We passed Nottingham Fort, a road yeah, towards Fort Nottingham, Nottingham Fort, yes, Fort Nottingham, yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, yes, this, this area is rich in history. Um, it's from the Irish settler days back in the late 1800s. And this farm um, was one of the Irish settler farms built in 1913. But in the area, there's, um, there's restaurants, there's um, horse riding, trails, um, lots of crafters around here, whether it's painting or pottery. We've got um, Ian Glenny down the road with pottery, that he was one of the founding members of Midlands Meander. Um, we've got plant nurseries, um, yeah, cockloo mm -hmm. canopy tours. Yeah, we've got everything. We really literally have anything that anyone wants to have be passionate about there's something for them to do and tell me a little bit about your property in terms of the cottages the cottages are there for couples do you have um two bedroom one bedroom what size cottages do you offer so we can sleep 24 in total with the four cottages and then we've got two b&b rooms and there's the different sizes so we've got the two bigger cottages that sleep six um and then the big thatched house has Two little kiddies bed so they can have another two kiddies so that's eight and then we've got the four sleeper and then the little one bedroom hayloft cottage with you in but they're absolutely beautiful i must say our stay last night was quite quite magnificent in fact we we hit the sack and that was it <laughs> we don't normally do that the peace and quiet out here. you must notice just 
there's no noise. There's no nothing. noise. It's white noise. Yeah. It's just the noise of the trees and the rain this morning. Yeah. It was quite beautiful, actually. In in terms of the Midlands meander, how do you um, – it, when the Midlands Meander was put together, how far does it stretch? It obviously includes you as well, uh, coming down the R103. Um, yes. I think there's a place up the road we noticed. There was a restaurant on the left-hand side. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Tanglewood. There's Tanglewood. There's The um, Taste of the book. I think the... Oh, Taste Buds Farm. Yes, right. Yes, I saw Taste that. So I'm assuming that it covers all of this area as well. Yes. So it, it actually co it carries from Hilton all the way up to Moy River, then from Carcloof, all the way across to sort of we're on the edge of it here. Okay. In Dargle. Um, and then the Camberg, obviously, as well. So it, it's, a, it's a, a vast area where we have five routes, um, the different routes on it. So it's five different routes that make up the meander in yes, total. Yes, yes. With lots of restaurants, activities, shops, crafters. Um, what was the idea behind the meander? So it was started by a few of the old crafters in the area. So um, they were made pottery and then there was the mohair blankets and rugs. Um, so it was just that the crafters wanted more business and in inviting the public to their homes, to their studios, to get to the real heart of the, their company, their business, what they do. Let them watch them make things. Let them um, experience uh, the clay and really get their fingers dirty and things like that. So that was the, the main objective, to try and get guests, public, to see their work, obviously to get more exposure for them. And it's just grown. And it's grown, obviously, to include, I've noticed, these wine estates, these activities, these restaurants, pubs, Everything. Um, Everything accommodation. Need, yes. Lots of accommodation um, to to house all these guests that we want to come to our area. Um, and it's literally a destination now. It's, it's, a, it's an area where, because we offer so much diversity and the beauty of it and getting out of the city where it's, you know, um, especially with COVID times, there's space here, there's clean, fresh air. And um, I think it's just, it's a draw card. It's just people want to come out and see the beauty and, and still be able to do things. Do you have many members? We've grown um, since COVID. COVID hit us hard. So we're back up to 90-odd members this year. But we want to grow back back up again to, yeah, 100, 150, 200 if we can. I mean, we want to grow it. We want to... People have uh, battled in the last couple of years with COVID and, and the restrictions that has been put in place. But um, we, we're confident that we're going to grow it again. And... and help people get back on their feet. Is your main market domestic or international? Um, for us, at the cottages, we're more domestic. We have family, holidays, get-togethers. Howick has the, um, a lot of those retirement villages, and we, we sort of a meeting place where family get together and um, stay here while they still can visit relatives. Um, but I think the bigger hotels, Granny Mouse, um, for Dune, they, I'm sure, have a lot of more international guests as well. So it's a, a little bit of a mixture of, of the area. And I think since COVID, a lot of the domestic market has started to find South African, yes. um, to visit South Africa more, has been quite an eye-opener because before they would, they would rather go to France or Spain or some exotic destination, stand in queue, spend a fortune, have Absolutely. the same sort of holiday yeah, that they yeah. have at home. Yeah, <laughs> They've been forced to, to um, explore their own country, which is lovely. I mean, and there's so many pockets that are so diverse in this country. It's just, it's amazing. And so, I think also it, it's been very noticeable how the hospitality industry has made a comeback towards the domestic tourism as well. They've sort of looked inward to say, you know what, we've got a market right on our doorstep. South Africans love to travel. So in, let's invite them to drive or to take a local flight, which is a whole lot cheaper. And we're spending in rands rather than spending in euro. Mm. Um, they're starting to reduce the, 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 the pricing as well from, to, for destinations. Yes. So it allows us to come through the Midlands Meander, have a bit more money to spend and, and support a local market. Yes, absolutely. Um, they, because there's so much to offer here, I think people can do like a little day trip. Um, it doesn't have to be 
um, a getaway as well. So I think you're right. I mean, it's just uh, it's lovely how people are opening their doors to the to us who mere mortals who can't afford these huge prices for game drives and things like that. So yeah. So I think it's fantastic. And it's certainly looking toward people like sand parks, um, a lot of the people who look after our big parks, whereas before they always had an international price and a local price, and I'm going, and now? And they're saying, well, we have one price. Yes. <laughs> and, um, it lasts. So I, I, I really do, actually. Yes. Uh, I hope that it lasts yeah. far longer than it has so far um, because I don't want this to be a one-off thing. It's, it's been so wonderful to see hospitality marrying domestic. Mm. Um, yeah, because had to make, plan. Had to make absolutely, yeah. and and it's interesting to see people like yourself have always been interested in a domestic market, so it's never been an issue. But the bigger guys have always sort of turned their nose up and sort of said, "Oh, but you local, we don't support you." Mm. And it was so interesting to see them come back hat in hand, holding their hat and say, "Would you like to come and visit us?" Well, let me think. No, we're supporting the local guys. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a very interesting turnabout. Um, what? them just become human again and become South African and become sort of part of our community. (laughs) Absolutely. I just love that. (laughs) And and it allows people to go and see places where they haven't been before because they've been, you know, not shut off, but they're unaffordable. So, no, I think it's uh, this whole, there's definitely some been some little ups. um, And especially when you have to make a plan, you have to diversify, you have to think out of the box and and try and get keep alive and try and stay alive absolutely i I just think and and kate it's been wonderful kate kelly of uh, beverly country cottages thank you so much for hosting us it's been really a wonderful experience um please give us some contact details and where we can reach you and where people can book okay so we have our website um www.beverlycountrycottages.co.za um you can book on there um directly with me on info at beverlycountrycottages.co.za or give me a call on 082-895-4002 or give me a WhatsApp and I'll be happy to respond. But thank you. Thank you, Janine, for <laughs> ha- yeah, allowing this opportunity. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm Janine Preston and you've been with Life is a Beach.